Vitam Tovajesh. Welcome to Big Brain University episode 2. I hope you enjoy. Please do. Vitam Tovajesh. To jest Polinkash. And today we're doing another episode of Prager U. Uh, I mean, fuck me in the ass. Big Brain University. <laughs> and we're doing uh, another set of Prager U videos uh, for your entertainment. So today we have um, Finn Bull, Red Renegade as usual, and also our guest Gravity Hook. Hey. Yo. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with why is modern art so bad? Enter the Prager. The Mona Lisa. The Pietà. The girl with a pearl earring. For a score of centuries, artists enriched Western society with their works of astonishing beauty. Is that a the Polish one. name? Okay. Uh, yeah, so... it is a Polish name. <laughs> First thing I want to point out about this guy specifically is I... Before you know, before this video, I actually browsed some of his artwork, and yeah, it's really, it's it's very textbook and uninspired. It's not terrible, but it's not great. It's just really boring stuff. I mean, there's just this one with the fucking, uh, it's this one where it's just a fucking horse carriage and being drawn by peacocks, and all the peacocks mm -hmm. look like they're copy pasted. Yeah, like I it, mean, like I, it, I, like like you'd say it follows the rule book, but it doesn't have that oomph. Oh yeah, yeah it's it, boring. It, it tries to it tries to shock know. you. It tries to shock you, <clears throat> but it's like it's it's shit that's already been or feels like it's already mm. been done. Yeah, there's a lot of like Native Americans and fucking. Uh, he draws a lot of Native Americans, and he also draws a lot of fucking like Arabian Nights kind of fucking themes. I don't know. It's really weird. I I don't really understand what it's trying to say. So why is modern art so bad? Yeah, Allegedly. let's continue. The let's... thinker. The Rocky Mountains. Master after master, from Leonardo to Rembrandt to Bierstadt, produced works that inspired, uplifted, and deepened us. I love how he calls them masters, too, as if that's like <laughs> some sort of objective thing. Yeah, they're the mm -hmm. masters. And they did this by demanding of themselves the highest standards of excellence. Improving yeah, oh yeah, here, here we days, go with the... These days, nobody gives a fuck. Like, back in the day, <laughs> they demanded the highest standards of excellence, but these days, it's just like, nah, I don't care. I don't I don't even want to be a good artist. Look, let, let, me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about uh, modern art. It is very demanding. Even though it looks simplistic, it is, it's not that it isn't demanding. You know, by the way, for those of you who don't know, I am an artist, so... Yeah. Picasso um, was an idiot who didn't. Picasso didn't didn't give a fuck about his art. He just drew a bunch of squiggly squiggly lines and like shitty yeah, you'll, uh, you'll notice, shitty drawings, you'll, and that's it. You'll notice that he will not mention Picasso once in this video. Yeah, he just well, very Picasso was a, he ignores Picasso the, was a communist <laughs> anyway. So just let's ignore that guy. He he ignores he ignores the um the actual like uh, new age masters. <laughs> or what what he would consider a masters like Picasso. Um, I think I, th I think what he means by that is. Work I think what he means by this is not necessarily that, but ma millennials, ma ma fucking SJWs who don't care about art, man. Those fucking twenty somethings, yeah, man. They don't. All they care about is degenerate <laughs> bullshit. They ain't about the real art. He, that's probably what he's talking about. Yeah, or no. who he's talking. Yeah, about. that's literally yeah. Uh... I wonder what the age demographic generate. is for like Prager U like viewership. Uh, well, it's I don't know. I mean, no, it's all boomers. Okay, uh, there, there are two you, demographics: edgy fifteen-year-old or forty plus. Yeah, it's either edgy fifteen-year-olds yeah. or boomers. That's all. That's all the people who watch Prager. Um, yeah, well, let's, let's continue Prager. getting Pragered. Mission of masters <laughs> and continuing to aspire to the highest quality attainable. But something happened on once again, like talking oh, about oh. quality as if it's some type of as if it's, a, as if it's some type of a quantity, yeah. like a objective something quantitative, um, fucking uh, thing. On the way to the twentieth century. Well, they literally have a graph for like how much quality there is. Yeah. Like, yeah. Versus we, have, we, haven't, we haven't gotten there. We haven't got there. I know, yet. but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they literally treat it as if okay. it's something you can measure. Today, wait, wait, wait. We okay. can, uh, the pointless and the purely offensive. Okay, so first of all, silly, pointless, and purely offensive. What the fuck does that mean? I mean, what does I mean, silly? What, is, what, is, what does silly mean? What does pointless I mean, mean? What does purely I mean, offensive even, mean? 
I mean, even if I'm thinking about, like, what's wrong with art being silly, or offensive, or even or purposely pointless. pointless. Or, or pointless, you know? Realistically, like, yeah. like, what's necessarily wrong with that? Yeah. Also, what yeah, I mean, look, look, I mean, look, look at Salvador Dali. You could say that that's silly or pointless. <laughs> Maybe not offensive, but you could definitely make that fucking... You could definitely make... You could definitely say that about it, but that doesn't fucking matter. Because it's fucking, uh... You, 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 you judge it... Because you judge it by its own standards, rather than judging it by the subjective fucking measure of whatever the fucking no, goddamn dude, Remel that, No, dude, dude we on. measure art by the amount of standard it has, okay? The more standard the art has, <laughs> the better it is in quality. Yes. I mean, or held up and, the more, and the more magic points it has. It, 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 <laughs> interestingly, yes. interestingly enough, like, this guy, he could totally be like... Im imagine if we were talking about socialist realism or something, where it's it's like... It, it's it's realistic like oil paintings they all um they they try to communicate a very very clear like clear message so there is so they're not pointless they're not silly they're they're uh, different not offensive either and they're also very well crafted and executed and like but then he would say like oh look this is just a totalitarian nightmare that like stifles creativity and whatnot uh yeah i mean like fucking uh yeah uh we what we do is we put art on the standard scale and uh, the higher the number the better it is it's the, the standard of tron <clears throat> michelangelo carved his david out of a rock the los angeles county museum of art just offers us a rock okay so he's talking this is about such a stupid straw man argument <laughs> yeah first of all that getting that rock up there was not easy. Yeah, he I, acts like he was I, like, "Oh, it's just a rock, man." Yeah, I think I've seen it's it like, before. I think the point of that piece is that it's a feat of engineering, not necessarily the rock itself. Yeah, it's like it. it yeah, because what happened was they had they had <laughs> cranes. They had to get cranes to lift the fucking rock up there, and then the cranes failed. So you know what the artist did? He got a bigger rock. Cause fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, because that's what he did. That's what that was the point of it was human ingenuity to do it, do something just because. Wow, it's almost like that's what art is, is just to yeah. do something just because. It's almost as if art should just entirely. It's not about be, if we should. It's it's almost it's almost as if that art should just entirely be a mode of expression than it is some type of quality, uh, like some <laughs> type of form of quality. Like it's kind of fucking it's pointless well that brings that brings up another topic like because he's talking about how like basically abstract things are apparently not good art and these very realistic looking things are are apparently good art but we can literally have a factory that manufactures like a hundred thousand perfectly realistic looking like statue replicas but well, that doesn't count like nobody so it clearly isn't just the realism of it. I mean that's that's the issue like when when photo when photographs were invented, you know, realistic drawings weren't as impressive. So that's why artists moved to abstract. You know. Mm. I mean e even even after the even after the mm. renaissance, like the late renaissance, like people started to like ignore proportions because, you know, drawing realistic things over and over again gets boring sometimes. Uh, yeah, and like, I mean, nice like, the, the thing about realism, choices. like, like, realism reflects life, but if you want to be creative, like, why should you do everything the way it is in real life when with art you can do it however you want? No, it's because, yeah. Prager, you told you to. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. A rock. It's because of traditional All values. 340 <laughs> tons of it. That's how far standards have fallen. Ugh. How did yeah, they... when we measured that rock on the standard scale, it was just, <laughs> it was really low. It was, had it was, it was just, standard. It, it had out, very out of all standard. 340 tons of it, it had zero yeah, tons it, of standard. Yeah, it, it had, had very, <laughs> very little standard. It had just a few micro, just few micro na nanograms of standard, yeah, it was, standardium in it. Yeah, it was it was measured in the nano standardium. Standards. Standardium. Yeah, it no, it was it was measured in the nano standards. It was that it was that low. <laughs> this happened. How did the thousand-year ascent towards artistic perfection and excellence die out? 
culture. <laughs> it has all died out. <laughs> totally it's hopeless now. Out. Yeah, it's almost like it, yeah, he acts like people have stopped making realistic fucking things. Why doesn't anybody make anything cool anymore? Just... <laughs> there are plenty of people out there. I was who born make in the wrong realistic... generation. Uh, yeah, there there are plenty of people out there that still make classical standard paintings. So I don't know what the fuck he's complaining about. You know, it's... yeah, but yeah, but like Rebel? those don't count. It's not it's not the mainstream anymore, <laughs> but it hasn't died. Against the French Academy de Beaux Arts and its demand for classical standards. Whatever their intentions. Okay, let me talk about this real quick. The reason the impressionists fought You see the reason the impressionists fought the fucking Academy de Beaux fucking French shit, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um the fucking the reason they did that is because first of all, the Academy was made up of fucking people who weren't artists. It was made up of a bunch of fucking rich nobles who decided to the rest of artists around the world, I mean around Europe specifically, what art was. So it was extremely limiting, meaning things can only be realistic, things can only be, uh, the only thing you can yeah, have is religious right. or mythological, it can only be about, uh, it can only be uh, made of, you know, sculpture can only be made of noble materials, noble materials quote unquote. Yeah. And noble so... materials are shit like marble, bronze, wood. Uh, and if you know anything about those materials, they're really fucking expensive. So, once again, nobles making fucking art for nobles. So, yeah, yeah, the but, Impressionists yeah, but... rebelled Sorry. against that because they realized, wow, this is bullshit. You know, they made things about, you know, people. And they, they made things about the city around them rather than religious or fucking bullshit. They fucking, uh, they made, uh, they made really quick paintings about, like, it was almost like a snapshot. And it made, yeah. and it was just... You were getting you were you were viewing rather than viewing a scene, you were viewing a window into reality, or you know you're getting that feeling, the impression. And if you look, of it. if you, I'll post some links. Like if you look at some of these impressionist paintings, they're not even what he. They're not like the sort of postmodern, like abstract, whatever, like that you would think based on his description. They're not like just an empty canvas with just like some shit smeared on it or something. It's like. They don't even compared to Picasso. They're pretty, pretty like old school looking. They're literally oil paintings, pretty, yeah, pretty realistic ones. Sowed the seeds of aesthetic relativism, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder mentality. Today, oh, it's so evil. No, beauty is in like how much standardium it has. Yes, yeah, so like the, that's the uh, it's the amount of standard that can be measured. Now you see. Now you see. Um, all, all, all of the artists lived in peace until the modernist nation attacked, and they said <laughs> this evil philosophy. <laughs> uh, moving on. And as with most revolutions, the first generation or so produced work of genuine merit. Monet, Renoir, and Degas still maintained elements of disciplined design and execution. But with each new generation... Oh, oh. if the government doesn't do it... Wait, wait, here wait, it is. Wait, what? There were no standards. Oh! oh. This, is, uh, this is actually an accurate <laughs> graph depicting the amount of standard and average paintings uh, by yeah, year. Imagine, like, how, how totalitarian <laughs> is this? Like, he's basically like, no, you can't like this. Like, you can't just like whatever you whatever you think is cool. No, we have to have, like, these, these old people, like, literally just tell you, this is, this is what's good. This is what's not good. You can only like this. You can't like this. Like, we we have to have like, why not just have like a government ministry that tells you that okay, this is art. Everything else is shit. Like, yeah. This can you imagine like anything more totalitarian than this? This graph was pulled. Communism. From the, uh, this graph was pulled from the uh, uh, the Academy of Scientific Truth, and uh, as you can see, um, <laughs> you the average the Prager's average. Ass? Yeah, no, the average standard measured in each painting had slowly dropped around the same time that the communists came in power. <laughs> oh, shit, you're right. Okay, Coincidence? Oh, I think actually, not. Actually, I would like to... There is a slight flaw in this graph I would like to point out. Now, I'm not too sure, but, you know, I'm pretty sure I learned in math class that an unreliable graph usually will not tell you what unit of measurement it's using. So what for? It's so using... what unit of standard is it using? Is it using the super standards or minor standardium? Because because I'm not too sure. It's it's very self-explanatory, you communist cuck. You know, 
<laughs> you know what's funny about this is this is the only graph which, since the series started. This is the only graph they've ever. Using. This is the only graph they've ever provided since this series started. Yeah, what's the what's the source of of this graph? I told you the Academy of Scientific <laughs> Truth. All right, let's move on. <laughs> okay. Was personal expression. Oh. The great art historian Jacob Rosen. God literally, God. Def literally God damn personal expression. God damn communist. God, 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 God forbid people have personal expression. Oh, literally, how evil. Who needs literally that? Literally the definition of art. Google the definition of art. It'll literally say personal expression. Yeah, yeah, there. but you see, here's the thing. It's wrong. Lies. Yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's, it's because the capitalist Jews. It's not merely a matter of personal opinion, <laughs> but to a high degree, objectively traceable. No. But the idea. Okay, Jacob Rosenberg no. was like in the fucking early, like 1900s when like no, that's when it. The Just shit no. was changing. What do you think about like how people can still look at movies, for instance, and they can see like, okay, this is objectively speaking, this is like good because people usually agree that this is a shit movie and this is a good movie, like. Is it just a matter of execution? Like, you can see that this is well, well, you know, the acting is good, the set design is good, the everything like that is good. Well, I mean, not always. Like, it can always I mean, be ambiguous or vague. Because, I mean, you can still, you can know, like, okay, this is a really bad movie, but it's still an entertaining movie. Like, The Room, for instance. Everybody agrees or the that it's or the Or the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Like, everybody agrees that it's a bad movie, but it's still entertaining somehow. And at the same time, you can have a really good movie, and people can still think that it is pretty boring. Yeah, it's just when you make films for filmmakers rather than films for general audiences. The idea of a universal standard of quality in art is now usually met with strong resistance, if not open ridicule. Not really. How can art be objectively measured, I'm challenged. In responding, <laughs> I simply point to the artistic results produced by universal standards compared to what is produced by relativism. Uh -oh. The former gave the oh world boy, the birth what? of Venus and the dying Gaul, while the latter has given us the Holy Virgin Mary, fashioned with cow dung and pornographic images, and Petra, the prize-winning sculpture of a policewoman squatting and urinating. All right, so I want to quickly point out the fact that... Um, this guy is literally fucking, uh, he's literally, um, comparing noble materials here. He's literally making the noble materials ar uh, argument is like, look at these, these were made with marble <laughs> and tamper on canvas. And this, Actually, this I'm shit, this shit's just fucking cow shit and pornos and fucking silicon and metal. Like, I mean, it's like, okay. such okay. a circular argument anyway. He's like, I'm gonna I mean prove that, I'm gonna <laughs> prove that objective standards are good because, like... Look how good this this thing made with objective like, standards. Like, like, like here's the thing with me on your standards in the first. Like, like the thing is, uh, me as a layman, I'm not much of an art guy, but like personally, I find the the bottom right one to be my favorite out of all of those. <laughs> Yeah, but, I mean, well, no, the, clearly the ones on the right have a lot more meaning <laughs> than the ones on the left. Like that's I all I want to say. <laughs> and like, yeah. if he and he again, he also talks about skill, like. Even if the bottom right one, like, has no meaning or he thinks it's vulgar, like, it obviously took a whole lot of skill to even make that. Like, you can't well, pretend I'm, it didn't. Maybe it's an exaggeration to say that the things on the right, like, have <laughs> have definitely have more meaning, but I think they yeah. definitely they, they have at least the same amount of meaning. Like, I think, yeah. I mean, I think I think the point I, is I that we're say, saying that say we, the... if you're doing like re religious or mythological material, it can still have you know a lot of symbolism in it and and stuff like that. It doesn't necessarily have like a social commentary or anything, but it yeah, just has. I think that's it's, it's my... different. My my point is is that the ones on the right clearly have a modern relevance. Like they're relevant well, yeah, yeah. to they're yeah, relevant and, and, to a social conversation. And I mean and I would say that like his entire argument is destroyed by the very fact that I dis that I can just decide I like the bottom right one the most. No you can, it's illegal. Yeah. Oh shit, I forgot. Yeah, here's and here's something I'd like yeah, to say. Yeah, dude, it's quick. bad because it's fucking it's a woman <laughs> taking a piss. It's bad inherently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here, here's here's, a, here's another, another point about the noble materials argument. The only reason the uh, the Academy of the Arts in fucking France decided 
that these were noble materials is because the Renaissance artists like to use these materials. Not because they were the best materials, even though you could make that case, but that they were the but that they were the materials they use. And the only reason the Renaissance artists use these materials is because the Greeks and the Romans used those materials. So and here's the thing. Let me tell you something. Cow dung would have been a fucking noble material <laughs> if the fucking Renaissance artists used it, and would have been a fucking noble material if the fucking uh, you know Greeks and Romans used it. But you know probably wouldn't survive that long. But my point is, is that the whole noble materials thing is a bullshit argument because <laughs> it's just this. You know they just they just see this idea from oh like these fucking great artists use these fucking no these materials like well they just used it because. The fucking Renaissance just used it because. Uh, well, it's the because fucking, it's, it uh, represents uh, it represents aristocracy. It represents being rich. Well, no, not not no no I mean, no. Yes, no, it does. I mean, the, like, like, I mean, another thing I don't. Another thing that, I don't it, really... that is true, but that's not why the Renaissance artists use it. The only reason they did it was because they were copying the Greeks and the Romans. Right, but the Greeks and the Romans used it because it was a symbol of nobility. Like, there's uh, a reason why. Greeks. There's yeah, a, yeah, Greeks. I would. Greeks, I would say, not, I wouldn't say so, but Romans maybe. But the point is, is that they were just copying. They were copying what the Greeks and Romans were doing. I mean, there and if is... you if you actually if you actually look at what Greek and Roman statues looked like back then, did you know that they painted over those uh, statues? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah, and they and the thing is, the Renaissance painters didn't know that. The Renaissance, uh, they didn't know that. They just saw that these ancient statues didn't have a. They saw that these ancient statues didn't have color, and they tried to copy that, even though they did have color when they were first created. Yeah. So same with uh, you know. Same with the uh, the pan the what's it? Yeah, called? like I mean, like I I actually knew that because from reading like some of Plato's writings, like he indirectly references how these statues had paint on them. Also, like it's it's another funny point to make that the <laughs> that the um that uh u.s government architecture is based off of um ancient greek architecture um and at the same time uh the ancient greek architecture actually did have paint on it and so now in the u.s we have a bunch of white buildings just because yeah it's and, almost um, like the wow it's almost like we decided that we like the way it looks and made it based on that rather than classical standards yeah also uh yeah. But I mean, no, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But, but it's like he's saying it's bad. Obviously, there's a material reason for why these, uh, for why these materials were used um, over, like cow shit, for example, and it's because um, <laughs> obviously marble is more valuable to a human uh, materially than the cow shit is, and obviously the more value. Actually, I really has, like cow shit. The more value well, actually, something has, the the more value something has, the more likely it is to represent nobility. And so yeah. it is it is a it is a symbol of classism, really. Um, the how uh, the so-called noble materials were decided, and that's all I'm trying to say. Mm. Complete Alrighty. with a puddle of synthetic urine. <laughs> Without aesthetic standards, we have no way to determine quality or inferiority. Here's a test I give my graduates. And that's okay. Okay, yeah, okay, here's we? the thing. Why, why would we need to Why would we need to determine quality or inferiority? It's almost like, a, you know, we had a system where these things could be, you know, put a price tags on them or something. Hmm. I wonder who hmm. would have a... I wonder who would have maybe, a fucking... Uh, maybe. Talented and well-educated. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Please analyze this Jackson yeah. Pollock. No, they're not. Like I mean, I'm going to show like you why. Painting and explain why it is good. It is only after they give very eloquent answers that I inform them that the painting is actually a close-up of my studio apron. I don't... Okay, so... First of all, I'd like to point out your fucking students are idiots, because anybody <laughs> who knows anything about Jackson Pollock would take one fucking look at that and say, that's not a Jackson Pollock painting. Because he has a very distinct style, so... Yeah, good job in educating your students, Jack. Whatever, he's just saying the same, like, abstract stuff is bad and, like, realistic stuff is good. And here's here's the issue with that. And here's another issue I have with that. Your fucking... Your fucking apron... You know, even though your apron might not be art, you can still make the... You can still make the argument that your apron has interesting form. 
you know. I yeah. mean, you can make. I mean, like, you, it, it's I'm not gonna, even. I'm gonna be honest. I'm a I'm a simple guy. I always liked the the pretty colors that uh, were on messy aprons. Okay, I'm like a fucking little kid like that. It's not I'm even yeah, far fetched. The thing is, it's, it's not even far fetched <laughs> to say that you could turn that into art. Like that's not even a far fetched thing to say. Yeah, no, absolutely it, not. Because by showing that you're like, you could easily make the uh, argument that it's like by showing that you're an artist, you're expressing yourself by presenting your fucking your apron. Like, yeah, and here's the thing. I'm 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 not even defending Jackson Pollock. I don't even think he's that good. I don't even think he's that great personally. And I have a lot of problems with uh, him and the postmodernists. But I do I do accept that it's art and I do understand that he that he didn't just slap fucking paint on a goddamn canvas. <laughs> he he had he put thought into it. You know, at least some, at least some form of thought. Not what I would do, but you know, whatever. I'm not Jackson Pollock, and I didn't make his fucking paintings, and I'm not a fuck. I didn't die a fucking millionaire. I don't blame them. I would probably have done the same, since it's nearly impossible to differentiate between. Yes, there is. You're an idiot <laughs> if you can't differentiate the two. And the two. And who will determine quality is another challenge I'm given. Me. If we are to be. Oh wait, he'll he'll honest, determine quality. We all know of situations where professional expertise is acknowledged and depended upon. Take figure skating in the Olympics where artistic excellence is judged by experts in the field. Surely we would flinch at the contestant who indiscriminately threw himself across the ice and demanded that his routine be accepted as being as worthy of value. Art is not a fucking competition, you fucking idiot. <laughs> We're not, com I mean, we are competing technically when it comes to capitalism. Yeah. It but, shouldn't you know, be a competition is, is the point. Uh, yeah, it I shouldn't mean, be. Uh, it like, is. Like, would, would, any, but... would anybody make the same kind of argument about like non-visual art? Like, if you're thinking about music or something, like, are you gonna say that the music that's the most popular is um, and most widely recognized is automatically the best? And then like some underground stuff that you know could be really complex, like really deep, really non-commercial and and whatnot and very challenging but then people don't like it so it's it's not good like, and here's the thing he, he he presents the he presents these artists as saying accept me accept me and they didn't they didn't do that they would have been fine with someone saying that their fucking art is is not that great you know of course yeah, when you slather paint on a fucking canvas you're gonna you know you'd be an idiot if you didn't expect someone to say that yeah <laughs> but it's it's a uh, you know, like the whole point isn't the whole point isn't whether you like it or you hate it. The point is, what is it saying? Does it deliver? Is is the painting saying something? Does it deliver on that? It, you know, it, it's 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 you can't. Re Ugh, God, I'm just repeating myself. Well, yeah, he's also like he's he he is acting like they're not supposed to have a meaning or message. It's just if it looks good or not. <clears throat> that of the most disciplined skater. Not only has the quality of art diminished, but also the subject matter has gone from the transcendent to the trashy. Where once artists applied their talents to scenes of substance trashy. and integrity, wow, it almost sounds like your history, opinion or something. Literature, religion, mythology, it's only oh, yeah, art can only be about those things, nothing else, etc. <laughs> Many of today's artists merely use their art to make statements. God forbid. For more than wow, artists making statements. God forbid, Fuck. man. Wow. Shock. Oh, wait, wait, God does forbid, Artists never mind. Artists of the past also made statements at times, but never at the expense of the visual excellence Ugh. of their work. That's such it's a not only argument. artists who were at fault. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is equally the fault of the so-called art community, the museum heads, gallery owners, and the critics who encourage and financially enable the production oh my of God. this rubbish. Oh, my God. Wait, okay. It wait, is they second. who champion wait. graffiti and call okay wait so hold hey. on so he's literally contradicting himself like <laughs> obviously he's literally saying we have to rely on the professionals in the fields uh to but fucking... then he's saying the professionals but then he's saying that the current professionals don't know what they're talking about <laughs> and then he just says that graffiti is bad and he... graffiti is art dude he's saying graffiti is bad and it's probably like i mean it's it takes skill to it it, it like I don't even know. Like it's so obviously stupid. Like this is a literally just modernized nineteen uh, fifties American propaganda. 
yes. <laughs> promote the scatological and call it meaningful. It is they who, in reality, are the naked emperors of art. Bitch, you're the naked emperor of art, you jackass. <laughs> For who else would spend ten million dollars on a rock and think it is art? Oh my god. But why oh do we god. have to be victims of all this bad taste? We don't. By the art we patronize at museums or purchase at galleries, we can make our opinions. I mean, not only to be honest, like, felt. isn't this just the most like gallery after all. the most kind of dumbed down thing to say? <laughs> like, oh, look, look at this like modern art. It's just like a bunch of squiggly lines, and I don't get it. Like, no, it's isn't literally this... the opinion of like an elementary school student. I know, I know. I well, like, I like the pretty pictures. Like I don't any... like this. Yeah. <laughs> if the product doesn't sell, it won't be made. Yeah, back to capitalism. I, I find I find that like it's funny because in middle school, uh, when I was in middle school, I probably would have repeated a lot of this shit, and it just goes to show that the that the dude I repeated, dude I repeated this shit last year. It, 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 it just, just, it, just go, it just goes to show that the far right mentality really is childish. It really is. Yeah, like I I, also... I held this I held this opinion last year, and when I fucking talk to a really my 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 cool art my cool art history teacher he she fucking uh, talked me out of it Support and i realized that there is value in you know it and just because i don't have to like something doesn't mean just because i don't like something doesn't mean that it has no value yep organizations like the art renewal center that work to restore objective standards to the art world oh yeah and we can they're trying to they're trying to fix the standard machines the teacher yeah, standard the machine broke in our understandable schools. have a nice day let's celebrate what, what we, we know, know is, good is good and ignore what we know is not <laughs> by the way I, ignore what we know is not good yeah okay that's we that's know a loaded, what's good man. that's a loaded fucking let me wait 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 let me back. guess i'm gonna let me guess before he even says it he's gonna say that behind him that's a painting and it sold for millions of dollars. He's going to say that. I'm calling behind it. Behind me is not simply a white graphic backdrop. It is a pure white painting oh. by noted artist Robert Rauschenberg at the San Francisco Museum. You know what about <laughs> that? That fucking painting behind you is far more interesting than anything you ever painted. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> of modern art. I'm Robert Florzak. For Prager University. All right, so let's let's uh okay, so he, he will he likes to God slam. Goddamn asshole doesn't other... even know how to pronounce his own last name. Here's the thing, this this guy likes to slam other artists. So let's do a little uh let's do a little uh special art critique. What well, don't you uh Paul and Kosh should be so kind as to uh post these in editing. So let's let's look at this well, one first. Well, well, just post it in the uh, watch together chat like Finbull did. It it doesn't it doesn't fucking do it. You can't uh, post the link. Well, I mean, I can, but it doesn't fucking. Just, just try uh, pasting the photo link into the message box, and then just, and just send. Let's press enter. Yeah. So. So here's let, let's start with uh, fucking clothy po Pocahontas. <laughs> oh my god. The fuck is going on with that cloth on yeah, her what, back? I don't. Yeah. So, like, let's look at this. What the fuck does that cloth mean? I don't fucking know. <laughs> and we got Pocahontas or something. I don't know. What, what is this? Uh, is this respecting fucking uh, a Native American culture? Probably fucking not. Yeah. Uh, oh, let's you know see. What? It, it, it's it's probably a representation of Islam. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about this one? Now this one. Oh shit! That link Fucked didn't work. Up. No. That link didn't work for me. Oh, it's because it's a fucking. All right, this one. Uh, when it decides to want to fucking. <laughs> All right, here's this one. It sounds like someone's right, so, opening a bottle, but I'm pretty sure this is washed together. All right, so here's this one. Look at that. More more flying cloth for no reason. Uh, I'm not really sure what this is trying to say. I think this is trying to be surrealist and not doing a good job of it. 
I mean, it looks nice. Like you gotta give him it that it looks nice, but it's just. Like, I mean, it's 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 it textbook. Is, it is very it's textbook. Very te yeah. It's very textbook. It's there's there's nothing interesting about it. I can't really say anything about it, because it's you just it's just what you see is what you get. And here's my favorite one. Here's my favorite one right here. This one this one just like kind of makes me makes me scratch my head. Yeah. Like. The 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 fucking um. The peacocks literally do look like they're. Uh... Copy pasted. They're, cop they're copy and pasted. Like what, dude? Really? Yeah. And like, what does this mean? Like, I'm not understanding. What? Like, is this is this painting telling you anything? Do the peacocks mean anything? I'm pretty sure. Like, from what I see, is that he's just trying to. He's just trying to like cool. just draw weird shit. I guess just like he's trying to draw like surrealist shit. But like, it's not interesting though. And okay, we've all seen this. Uh, I made, I, I saw a video, and someone said it perfectly that a lot of this stuff looks like rejected uh, board game box art, and this is like a pretty good example of that. <laughs> <laughs> this one. That literally, it looks like freaking that little that literally looks Dragons. like a D and D. Yeah, exactly. I was about to say, it literally looks like a D and D cover. Yeah, but like, I maybe you just like don't get art like he does, and that's why you think it's bad because you're just some well, filthy we, we millennial don't even, postmodernist. We don't even think it's bad. Like, we're not saying it's bad. <laughs> we're just saying it's very. I know. Like, it's very textbook. It's not very like. It's very uninspired. It's very. It's 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 what you see, what you get. There's really not much to say about it. Yeah, you know? I mean, it looks nice. Like, I'll give him that. It's it's a nice looking. It's a nice looking work, but it's just, it's so obviously it just like he didn't put a lot of like, uh, I guess, uh, thought. There's a lot it. of effort put in. No, I wouldn't say thought. A lot of effort, but not thought. There's... I said, yeah, no, I'm saying that there's clearly not a lot of thought. Yeah, and okay, this is another one. You see this kid a lot. Uh, hold on. You see this kid a lot. It's like some fucking. I guess, uh, fuck Crocodile Hunter Kid? I don't know. Crocodile uh, Hunter Kid? I don't know. Crocodile I just, that, I get that. Okay. But yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah, that's a- Yeah, but that's about it for this one, folks. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to the next video. Yeah. But, uh, alright, well, uh, okay. Moving on to the next video. Welcome to Big Brain University, Big Brains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... Red Renegade uh, wasn't able to make it for the, uh, this part of the video, unfortunately, because uh, he had to go do some shit, and also his internet just kind of uh, suicided. So um, the rest of this is just going to be me, Finn Bowl, and Gravity Hook, unless we manage Gregor to get another. Much for him. Yeah, unless we manage to yeah. get another guest at some point, but probably not. Um, so yeah, let's let's continue. Let's Prager. The health of an economy can be measured using a variety of indicators. Common ones include the unemployment rate, monthly job creation figures, and GDP, or the total value Ooh. of all goods and services produced in Ooh, an economy no, that's over wrong. a year. But a less free you want to say something about so? that? Yeah, that's wrong. Uh, GDP is nothing more than the money flowing between exchanges, not the actual production. If I was to pay you twenty thousand dollars to eat a pile of shit, that would increase the GDP by twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> like, no, that's yeah. not a good way to measure the success of an economy. I'm sorry. And if they if they provide <laughs> everybody with like free healthcare, that doesn't actually add anything to the GDP. Yes. <laughs> Frequently used, well, although very important indicator is wage growth. While it may not be the first thing to come to mind when thinking about the economy on a larger scale, now I, growth I will really, really, will that's not you. the first thing to think about when the economy is growing. Is the actual that is value literally the that first the, thing I think about? Well, yeah, the I, value I, that guys, you're making. I bet you, I bet you guys that when they talk about <laughs> wages, they're not even going to talk about real wages. They're just going to talk about like the the nominal wage, like the number. <laughs> <laughs> like really like the, the w in the growth of the economy the first thing you don't think about is whether or not my fucking salary will raise like really <laughs> like <laughs> fucking like this is so fucking stupid <laughs>
directly linked to things like sales performance at stores and restaurants, fluctuations in the housing market, and can even increase the standard of living. And when <laughs> PTSD from 2008, it's your wages <laughs> going up, it becomes very important. Because as wages rise, Americans spend more money. But the question is, what causes wages to rise? Well, there are several things that influence wage growth. Number one. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is that the U.S. has had stagnant wages for like 40 years. So what what does cause them to rise? Well, nothing. Cause they actually, uh, actually, there is a reason that they rise. Um, but it's probably not going to be what he answers. Um, there are three factors In of how much a worker is paid yeah there are th there are three work there are three factors that determine the real wage of a worker um, well yeah but he's probably not even going to talk about real wages because real yeah. wages have <laughs> not risen in like the last yeah. several decades yeah yeah one employers simply have more profits so they are financially able to raise worker compensation not true this fucking never happens oh never Hold on, uh, real quick. They never just raised the. They never increased the wages just out of the kindness of their heart. That never happened. These extra yeah. funds could be the result of a jump Hold in on. business. Uh, gravity. Um, could you give the the? You were talking about like three things. Could you give the three things? Yeah, there are three things. Um, the first one is how much it costs for the worker to live to continue to do the labor over and over. Um, the the second thing is how much profit that they make the person. And this isn't a reference to more profit equals more wage. It's a reference to the maximum amount that they can be paid. You can never be paid more than the profit you make for the employer. And the third thing is something more collective. It's the um, employment rate. In other words, when there's a really high employment rate, say 100%, um, that means there won't be another desperate schmuck who's willing to do your job cheaper so a worker will be able to be on the other side of negotiating a wage but when there's a low unemployment rate that means you can get away with paying them lower because uh, you know you mean, you mean higher because, unemployment rate yeah higher unemployment rate excuse me but because um you can get away with paying them cheaper because you know how replaceable that they are right and basically wages can never um they can never go below the what is considered the the average cost of living basically and uh, um mm -hmm. you you need to be able to you know have some place to stay get food uh get the necessary transportation or whatever it is for the worker to be able to continue to function as a as a worker so yeah. as like for if you look at first world countries like standards of living have increased so uh cost of living has also increased and and uh, it is considered that you pretty much like um, in the first world you you are getting like a good standard of living because you're living in like a nice apartment but there are only apartments like that you can't live in like a, like a yurt or something you it's uh, you need to get the average type of apartment you need to get you, you might need you probably need a computer you you probably need a smartphone mm -hmm. realistically you, you you might need a car mm -hmm. um and those are considered like western you know first world luxuries mm -hmm. but they're actually part of the necessary reproduction of um yeah. labor that's that's what i meant by the first aspect it's just yeah yeah exactly bare minimum yeah. you have to pay them enough to keep working yeah those are all necessary for the <clears throat> reproduction of the of the work uh, or of the uh, labor power performance caused by a hike in sales or a public policy change such as a reduction in the tax rate oh my fucking number two God. the market for labor becomes more competitive this situation oh can God. arise when the you want to say something oh my God. no the the tax rates lowering uh usually means tax rates lowering for the upper class and at no point in history has that resulted in people getting a wage. Well, yeah. that's trickle-down economics. Yeah, trickle-down... I'm sorry, Prager, but trickle-down economics does not fucking work, and it has never been proven to work. It has never historically worked. Like, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
we we as communists don't agree with fucking taxes like taxes are fucking pointless like we should just have a, a system based on fucking redistribution but um fucking uh but to claim that lowering the taxes under capitalism will somehow improve the the condition of the proletarian is fucking retarded never forget when they say lower taxes they don't mean lower taxes for you or me they mean lower taxes for your Corporate boss. Taxes. Even if you did lower the I mean, <laughs> taxes for the proletarians, it would still result in shittier yeah. conditions. Yeah. And and what it means by competitive, like, let me just say something about the job market. Like, the job market can be however competitive you want, but basically you will only have, like, big wage increases uh, for the workers in, in rare instances where, like... Let's like rare instances where you actually have a scarcity of some kind of type of labor. Like, there's always going to be too much, um, like, more, there's always going to be more than enough, um, unskilled labor available. There's going to be plenty because anybody can do it. It's unskilled labor. But for certain kinds of things, like when, when, uh, like the IT sector, the computer sector was becoming, a big thing in in Finland for the first time in like the late 80s um, um, I think it was late 80s but like anyway it doesn't really matter the point is that in those those times like they actually did have a serious scarcity of people who could do that kind of work and they would pay them they would uh, anybody who graduated with a computer degree they would hire them right away they would give them, they would pay them high wages uh, and yeah, the companies would actually compete over who who gets them because there were so few of them, and it was a very profitable new field. But these days, when like when I got my computer degree, which by the way is a much you know better degree than what the people had back in those days, because uh, those days you would get like a trade school degree. Well, I have a university degree, but it's still these days it's not worth anything. When I when I applied to uh, there was one computer job that I applied to. There were 150 other applicants. Jesus. And yeah, it's still exactly as competitive. You know, well, in in some ways, it's actually more competitive now because now there are so many more applicants. Yeah, uh, usually, like like by um, like by a job market being competitive, does he mean like workers competing for the same job? Because he probably imagines like, oh, I can do the job better. No, I can do it better. When really it's no, I can do the job cheaper. No, I can do it cheaper. Yeah, like I like the, that's the usually how it ca works. Capitalists aren't looking for <laughs> workers based on their skill. They're working. They're looking for workers based mm -hmm. on their cost effectiveness. Like, 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 unless you mean say I don't know, rare cases where there's a high employment rate, like I already said. Yeah, then it'll be the employer competing for it, like Finbull said. But that's definitely not how it is in most countries. Yeah, yeah. And that's only like small, like rare niche type of sectors. Temper yeah. Temporary. Up. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, no. Competitive uh, labor market <laughs> is just bad. <laughs> like, it makes my PP soft. Everybody should have the right to work. It's as simple as that. Like, not even a question. <laughs> The number of job openings surpasses the number of people looking for employment, a circumstance referred to as a tightening of the labor market. The lack of available workers forces businesses to compete over job candidates by outbidding each other with perks like higher wages, better working conditions, more vacation time, Bullshit. and other benefits. Like, yeah, if when, when the, uh, the unemployment rate is low, maybe, but yeah. even then, um... Even then, it's not like they're fucking like they're not doing that out of out of like any sort of um, advantage for the workers. They're doing that entirely for profit. Like as soon as and the... when in capitalism, like do you even have this happen? Like in capitalism, you basically never have full and full employment. It's this only happens in like rare instances in like some niche sectors of the yeah economy. it usually happens with like um with like yeah. technological breakthroughs, and that's about it. Um, like when when you have a technological uh, breakthrough and a, and a small uh, group of people 
uh, invested in that by you know studying it and so then because they're a very small minority they have access they have a lot you know they have access to good job opportunities however the vast majority of the time the capitalists try to keep unemployment rates high they try to do so because it's more yeah. profitable it's it's like it's unironically healthy for the economy like like the reason there was almost a recession earlier this year is because the the unemployment rate went down to like what 4.3 percent and apparently that was too much yeah capitalism literally uh capitalism relies on um the worst proletarian conditions to survive pretty much number three Typically, wages rise with skill and experience. Whether the skill or knowledge is acquired from a traditional higher education institution, trade school, or simply from on-the-job experience, wage levels or will fluctuate Prager based you. on the demand for these <laughs> respective attributes. The rule of thumb? More education and experience in a field with room for growth equals incorrect. higher wages. Wage levels... You want to expand? No, just 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 incorrect. I've explained it. Oh yeah, yeah. already <laughs> can change for a number of reasons, but one thing is for sure: when the economy is doing better and unemployment is low, wages will be on the rise. To subscribe to our okay. YouTube channel, what's funny is that when unemployment is is low, while it's good station. for workers, it it results in the economy going into a recession like it did earlier this year. Though I Shut guess it's not good, is it? Shut up, you communist. <laughs> or or when they say good whenever capitalists say quote unquote good for the economy i always wonder good for who good for the capitalist <laughs> well it's obviously not good for the capitalist for unemployment to be low yeah i mean no like like they're <laughs> like they finish that video off by saying so low unemployment rates means higher wages and it's like okay but capitalism literally tries to increase the unemployment like, rate at all times it's like yeah yeah okay i'll i'll give Prager you that they're not wrong on that but the thing is, what they're incorrect about is that it's good. Like, no, it's completely against the interest of the upper class to want that entirely. They want to have people be replaceable. They want to get labor at a discount. They always will. Well, here's the next video. Oh, boy. Was America founded to be secular? <laughs> what role should religion play in a free society? More and none. more people today would answer, none. That would not have been the answer to the founders of the United States, the men who fought the American Revolution and wrote the country's constitution. To them, the issue of religion and freedom were inextricably linked. You couldn't have freedom without religion. In fact, the political hold philosophy on, of the... Liberty's secrets, the lost wisdom of America's founders. I, I <laughs> truly... I truly wonder what he has to say in this book. <laughs> Founders necessitated a divine. By the way, this guy literally looks like a fucking like a college fraternity like person. Like, <laughs> like he, he looks he like looks he just like he got out of the college could, fraternity. He looks like he could chug from a keg upside down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Foundation. Thomas Jefferson makes this clear in the Declaration of Independence when he writes that all men are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. Oh, shut the fuck up. I am so fucking done with this shit. <laughs> jo Thomas Jefferson was a fucking deist. He was he was so fucking deist. He literally rewrote the Bible. He literally rewrote like just look up Jefferson's Bible and it's literally him taking all the shitty stupid fucking parts out of the Bible and just keeping the good morals. And, and that's I, that's all it is. Be, <laughs> they, what I find to they be a constantly, meme is that they sorry. They, they, they yeah they constantly quote mine uh, Thomas Jefferson <laughs> all the fucking time saying that he's some fucking religious fucking person, but it's always baseless fucking quote mining. And I and and like the reason why I'm so heated about this is because I used to argue about this shit all the time with stupid fucking <laughs> religious people. But anyway, continue with what you were saying, oh, Gravity. The, what, what, what's a meme is that this is, you know, part of the American thing of, like, worshipping the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, like, almost as much as the Bible. And it's like, like, um, I don't think the Declaration of Independence is relevant at all to whether or not the U.S. was founded to be secular or not, because it is not the law code. 
it's just it's literally just a letter saying hey britain we're not part of you anymore you know the the shitty thing <laughs> is is that um the shitty thing is is that uh the the jefferson memorial has a quote above it that's like mm-hmm. related to god and it's a complete fucking quote mine i i don't remember what it was exactly but um basically like if jefferson was alive to see his fucking memorial he would probably shoot up a school oh you can't make that joke man whatever man the purpose of government jefferson and his compatriots believed was not to bestow rights rather it was to protect those rights already endowed upon human beings by god but government oh. isn't enough for free society whatever like when they say natural (laughs) rights come from god or like it doesn't matter if you say they come from god or they come from nature or whatever they're just natural inalienable rights like they would even use those they would even use nature and god synonymously they would say nature's law or this is according to nature and whatnot christians still do it to this day they say homosexuality is against god and against nature could you, you know, uh, could, 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 excuse me, Prager, could you give me the citation, uh, for, um, God, for human beings having, uh, natural rights by God? Also, make sure it's the Christian God. <laughs> like, can you give me the yeah. citation? Can yeah. I, like, like, can I, I see like, a like, source I mean, for this, a scientific source? Because, I mean, I'm pretty sure Vishnu gives me my rights. <laughs> yeah, like, a moral people is also required. That is, a people moral enough to police itself. Oh, oh my god. No, I'm pausing that. A, n- a people moral enough to police itself? That's that's retarded. That's not at all how states work. States have to vo- validate themselves through through violence. Even as Marxist-Leninists were going to recognize this. It's not because people just cooperate magically. Yeah, like, no. Well, this is I... like a weird contract contractarianism argument. Which yeah, is no, a... the 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 it's, <laughs> they're acting as if the state itself is moral, like inherently. Like no, that what what the fuck do you get when you worship the state as a moral entity? Like even from their perspective, they're wrong because like would they then argue that like oh yeah, Nazi Germany was so moral, man. A uh, big bad Soviet Union was so moral. From Shut their up, perspective. commie. Get pragered. <laughs> okay. Necessary spring of popular government. <laughs> Feel the prayer. Thus, for the founders, <laughs> liberty was not merely the ability to do what one wanted. It came with moral demands and boundaries. My God. They all accepted <laughs> okay. the rule of life expressed by Benjamin Franklin. Nothing brings more pain than too much pleasure. Nothing more bondage than too much liberty. The founders knew that the yeah, absolute the guy who owned freedom said that. was, ironically, a freedom that was absolute and unrestrained. And where was this restraint going to come from? Their answer was religion. Which for them, because of when and where they lived, was citation needed. Please, please. The restraint fucking show came from me. the violence of the state. Please show me where the founding fathers <laughs> said that the restraint is religion. Please give me the goddamn citation. I mean, even Some if they did of- say that, the founding fathers would be wrong, because the restraint comes from the violence of the state. Like I already said. Yeah, f- fucking Christianity. Let divines and philosophers, statesmen and patriots unite. Samuel Adams wrote in instructing citizens in the art of self-government, in short, of leading them in the study and practice of the exalted virtues of the Christian system. The oh Christian system to which yeah, Adams refers virtues. is composed of Judeo-Christian values. Oh my the values God. rooted <laughs> in the Old and New Testaments, both of which were referred to by the founders with equal conviction and frequency. Je- well, except Jefferson, though. I mean... Whatever they have, they have some good values and some not so good values. Like the, uh, you know, love thy neighbor and the golden rule, like, are to be found in pretty much all religions. Christianity is not the first one to come up with that, and not the last one to to use it. Like um, Old Testament, on the other hand, like has some pretty pretty poor. Um, how, it has, like, like pretty, it has a terrible, pretty has a terrible plot. Flawed, that's for sure. Like, I mean, pretty the, flawed the, morality. Like, I, I was, I was telling like Gravity Hook earlier that there was a Christian sect, or like, um, uh, I should say, like a, a pre-Christian and also uh, partially um, Christian sect called Gnostic Christianity, 
which was basically the whole premise of Gnostic Christianity was that they thought that Jesus was good, but that the God of the Old Testament was evil and 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 a clearly a uh, not a very good deity. So he he um, had to be some kind of lesser creature, like some kind of demon or or an, some kind of lesser thing, and not truly a god. And that there had to be a different god out there somewhere. This they they literally came up with that because they read the Old Testament and they thought that like wow, like this is not this is not good. Like even a, even a human being could come up with something better than this. Yeah, and, yeah, no, and like, even the then, Old like, Testament relatively... is terrible. Like it's like. It's like it's as if it was written by like nine year olds, but those nine year olds were all sociopaths. Like, like I mean, even then, it it doesn't really, or at least the U.S. law code doesn't necessarily line up with the teachings of the Bible. Like, like usually I'll hear usually I'll hear Christians say, "Oh, but you know, it's illegal to kill and steal," and it's like, "Yeah, what a big fucking revelation! No one else has ever thought of that before." Yeah, what about no what about before? when it says in the fucking Bible that um that adultery <laughs> should be illegal? Does the U.S. State yeah yeah adul that? adultery is not illegal? Uh, boiling a baby goat in its mother's milk is not illegal. Um, the punishment for rape is not paying her father twenty shekels. <laughs> Punishment like, for witchcraft is not execution by the state. Yeah. Like, uh, and that's not to say the Bible, you know, like Finbull said, it doesn't have good morals, but it's, but the thing is the U.S. law code is irrelevant to the teachings of the Bible. Yeah. The, the, the U.S. law code is entirely based on liberal <laughs> principles and to claim anything else is just fucking uh, fraudulent. Yeah. Jefferson. Yes. The very same Thomas Jefferson, who is so often portrayed as anti-religious confirmed this sentiment in his notes on the state of Virginia, when he asked, can the liberties of a nation be thought secure when we have removed their only firm basis, a conviction in the minds of the people that these liberties are the gift of God and that oh they are God. not to be violated but with <laughs> his wrath? James Madison likewise affirmed the essential connection between religion and morality. Oh, oh, the belief uh -oh. in a God all-powerful, wise, and good is essential to the moral order of the world and to the happiness of man. Okay, first of all, you know that if they put dot 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 in the middle of a quote, that there's some fucking bullshit going on. Yeah, there's and something before or yeah, between. There's, there's something that happened. they left out. There's something that they left out. But even if I wonder even, if I should, I wonder if I should look up the quote. Go ahead and look up the quote just to see. But even if it is a completely like honest quote and it's not, uh, yeah. it's not a false quote, that doesn't mean it's correct. It's this is completely wrong. Why do you need a belief in a so-called um, all-powerful, wise, and good God to to just you know fucking like? Go. Why do you need that to um, to have the belief that like killing other people is bad? Like, why do you need that? Why can't you just come to your own conclusions through your own fucking logical sense that, hey, maybe there are certain things that are not very good to do to other people and would probably not be very beneficial to the advancement okay. of society as a whole? I okay, I found the full quote. The belief in a god, all-powerful, wise, and good, is so essential to the moral order of the world and to the happiness of man that arguments which enforce it cannot be drawn from too many sources. Why did they leave out so? <laughs> I don't know. What the fuck? If I, Prager, if I what is going on? A, if I didn't believe in a uh, all-powerful, wise, and good God, then I'd be killing people. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Fucking... Like, I, I, and honestly, if I'm being completely fair, I do not want the only thing standing between me and another guy killing me is that they believe. They, they believe in an unprovable man like that would actually fucking scare the shit <laughs> yeah, out of that, me that that would literally scare the <laughs> fucking that would scare my fucking balls off if like like i've heard person... christian say the only reason i don't murder people is because i believe in god i just take 10 steps back like i'm not fucking with you <laughs> like you don't have like you don't have a conscience you don't have empathy like you just have fear what, of god. what if as soon as what if as soon as you're god like let, let's say some random person oh, yeah, fuck, like, hold on, hold on, imagine okay. that person becomes an atheist they just Start, like, oh, going, oh god branding. i don't want to disprove god to them <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh um, john adams believed that yeah yeah let's continue that the doctrine of the supreme intelligent wise almighty sovereign of the universe a doctrine he credited to judaism 
was the great essential principle of all morality and consequently of all civilization. And he applied this thinking specifically to the new nation he helped to create. Our constitution, he said, was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Yeah, that's why that's why they <laughs> made it so fucking specific, the necessity of the separation of religion and state. That's totally why. Yeah, makes sense, I guess. In the if entire constitution. If they truly believe that the Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people, then why the fuck did they specifically entail that no, that the state cannot fucking um, favor any religion, that the state cannot fucking, um, that the that the state and religion must be separated? Like I've why? I've heard some people argue to me that it was is that it was in reference to different sects of Christianity, not just any religion. And in a way that was enforced, but the thing is that was fucking awful and a bad yeah. idea. Also, like the, <laughs> do you honestly think that it's okay to? I mean, okay, no, of course they think it's okay to waste fucking money on religion because they're stupid fucking spiritualist <laughs> reactionary reactionaries. But like, come on, just use your goddamn brain, you fucking <laughs> prager tards. As president, he replied to a letter from university students in a way that would surprise many today. Science, liberty, and religion have an inseparable union. Without their joint influence, no society can be great, flourishing, or happy. Oh my Meanwhile, God. another founder, Alexander Hamilton, looked at the French Revolution and... The, we, we, I mean, if anybody in the audience wants to double-check these quotes, go ahead, because I can guarantee you that at least one of them <laughs> is total bullshit. And I can guarantee you that um, almost all the quotes related to Thomas Jefferson are bullshit. ...saw something much different. That revolution, unlike the American Revolution, had devolved into violence and chaos. Hamilton believed he understood. Really, the the, uh, you, the fucking American Revolution didn't devolve into cha like violence and chaos. Like there's a lot of fucking people like killing other people. What uh, the? What is the Revolutionary War? Yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not only that, but, like, there were fucking, like, British loyalists getting fucking, um... There were British loyalists getting fucking harassed and murdered in the colonies. No, 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 but, Poland Garst, that's just revisionist history. You see, we just politely asked the British to be independent, and they just let us. Oh, right, my bad. My bad, that's correct. That is the correct version of history, after all. <laughs> the United States has never done anything wrong. Did why? <laughs> the anti-religious force it unleashed, he wrote, annihilates the foundations of social order and true liberty, true liberty. confounds all yeah, moral distinctions, liberty. and substitutes for the mild and beneficent religion of the gospel a gloomy, persecuting, and desolating atheism. Oh my for the God. founders, a free society divorced from religion simply could not work and would not survive. Well, it is no even wonder if they then, did think that, that they're wrong. farewell address... George Washington chastised yeah, those who of, would claim... Of course, fucking, uh, of course the fucking <laughs> reactionaries are going to be like, yeah, you know, the Founding Fathers uh, supposedly said it, so uh, it's got to be true, because they're the Founding Fathers, <laughs> so it's just pure fucking reaction. Like, no, you're not, you're not allowed to say the Founding Fathers are wrong. They're up there with Jesus, man. Yeah, literally. George Washington is literally Jesus reincarnate. Like, no, that's stupid. Aim to be patriots and yet undermine the influence of religion. <laughs> of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. In vain would that man claim the tribute of patriotism who should labor to subvert these great pillars of human happiness, these firmest props of the duties of men and citizens. The founders did not demand that anyone believe in any particular religion or even in God. No, uh, yes, they did. Um, originally, you were the only way you were allowed to vote is if you were part of the church and owned land. Oh, man. Quite the contrary. But while they understood the value of a secular government, they feared a secular society, one without religion. So should we. I'm John. What? <laughs> we sh huh? Huh? We should fear it. Huh? What? We should fear a secular society. You mean a, 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 a fucking society where people have the freedom to fucking believe in whatever they want? Like, we should fear that? Like, oh, yeah, I mean, I guess, I, guess, I guess we should just enforce fucking fundamentalism. That, that would be preferable after all, right? Yeah, we need to bring back prayer in schools. Yeah, fucking, uh, 
yeah, man, let's just uh, let's just fucking enforce Christianity throughout the fucking United States. Oh, see, oh wait, oh wait, no. Uh, in reference, uh, if a PragerU fan is watching right now, know that we're being we're being ironic. Okay, we don't actually believe this, even though you might. <laughs> yeah, you you might have the fucking uh, you might have the uh, the IQ. <laughs> Um, to be able to believe uh, th that our fucking um, sarcasm is completely fucking real. Um, God fucking damn it, dude! What what a what a fucking what a disgrace! Joshua Charles, writer and researcher at the Museum of the Bible for Prager University. <laughs> to keep that, our that videos... fucking smile, dude. Fuck off, you fucking smirk, <laughs> fucking little bastard. Just your concentrated Prager, dude. No, th th this. I think this video has me the most triggered out of any video. Like my inner fucking uh, atheist middle <laughs> schooler came out. <laughs> yeah, dude, this video got me fucking. Oh man, Jesus fuck. Ah, oh, well, yeah.